right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from lovely San Diego. And today I'm joined by Jerry Nylands, who is actually also is in California, is a little further up the coast from me here. How are you doing, Jerry? Good afternoon. Nice to be with you. Yeah, absolutely. And Jerry is with Trade Press Services, who deliver content marketing, media outreach. And you are the uh, president. I am. Excellent. Excellent. And today we're going to talk about sales and marketing alignment. So, Jerry, let me start off by asking you, why in 2020 are we still talking about sales and marketing alignment? Because we've never gotten it right. Mm -hmm. And I think that people don't realize that there is a real difference between sales and marketing and that it's marketing's responsibility to identify the people to sell and it's a sales responsibility to sell the people marketing finds. But that says they don't communicate very well and they don't collaborate very well. Mm. And why is, it, why is there still that issue around communication and collaboration given the fact that um, you know, selling marketing and sales, it's become a lot more overlapped and a lot more interlinked probably than it ever was. So why is there still that issue with collaboration and communication? I think there's a basic mistrust. And I think that with marketing, they tend to think of salespeople as being insincere, having a lack of follow through, being flighty, being pampered, being arrogant. Um, and I, I think salespeople tend to view marketing as um, people who, who can't, stand on their feet, can't make a decision quickly, mm -hmm. that they focus on the wrong things. So there's never the twain shall meet. You know, I think right. of this thing, why can't a woman be more like a man? And that environment <laughs> still exists. Right, right. Um, so what are some of the, when you work with organizations, what are some of the ways in which you get sales and marketing to start to become alignment. I guess part of the part of it is actually recognizing that there's a need for alignment in the first place. That's correct. Um, the only time we really get involved in that type of activity is when we're working with somebody who specializes in sales and is looking to get an article published and they have to involve the marketing team in that regard. And so that's where we would begin to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. So what are, what are some ways then um, marketing can really start to maybe break down some of the barriers with sales? I, I think it starts with the planning process. I think that if there were more joint meetings and planning sessions between sales and marketing, uh, that could be very helpful. I think that if they did some cross training, I think that could be helpful. I right, think if right. they worked on identifying new markets together, um, they worked on product development, pricing, promotion, placements of those things, you know, the four P's in marketing, that that would help uh, align them. Mm -hmm. Um, no, absolutely. And, and to be honest, I mean, some of that is going to have to be driven and um, somebody's going to have to take the initiative to drive that because it's not suddenly, you know, suddenly sales isn't going to invite marketing along. Uh, so somebody within marketing or within sales, you know, has to drive that, right? Right. Yeah. And then, and then when, when sales and marketing alignment starts to come together, what are some great examples you've seen of, of really good sales and marketing alignment? Well, I think the messaging begins to change. And I mm -hmm. think that marketing understands they have to be able to tap into the benefits of the products or services that a company or what the sales team is selling. So they really have to understand buying motives and buying decisions. And I think when that happens, you see a um, 180 degree change, if you will. Right. And those are things and it, always, it does always kind of amaze me how sometimes how, you know, marketing people aren't 
um, shall we say, inquisitive enough um, to really want to understand the full life cycle of, of you know, from from a lead all the way through and to what customers value and what actually resonates with them. Sometimes there's a, they're far too comfortable, I think, with the demarcation. They go, well, here's my job finishes here and sales begins. And they, as I said, they don't have that curiosity about what happens after that. Well, I, I think that's true. I, I think salespeople tend to be so numbers driven, you know, quota driven, mm -hmm. revenue, profit, um, and marketing just doesn't have that mindset, but they're beginning to get it from the data analytics perspective. So when right. the two sides can come together and look for ways to collect data, analyze data, and then make joint decisions, I think that's a positive. Mm. And what is what are some of those what is which what are some of those data elements that they should be looking at? What what are some areas where sh you know sharing data and looking at the same set of data would benefit both? Uh, I think that looking at the length of the sales cycle is mm -hmm. one way. Looking at the target industries, looking at the size of the companies that uh, looking at the engagement on social media, on your website, response to ads, to trade shows. Um, I think you know, this, how many times a company will engage in a repeat sale. Mm -hmm. I, I think those are some of the numbers you wanna look at. Um, and I think another one too is, uh, if you think about it too, is um, you know working to consistently um, maybe refine and tweak what a target what a really good target buyer looks like because i think we've had this issue sometimes where marketing will come up with you know these personas and they don't market to these personas but they didn't but sales weren't involved in in drawing in in defining what those personas were and then you have the misalignment on you know sales are saying well you're not bringing us exactly the right type of people and i think that they need to come together and really define the target buyer so much in a so in a more deep and detailed manner i i agree with you uh, i think it was harvey mckay who wrote a book a uh, hundred years ago and he talked about the information that every salesperson should know about prospect or customer and it was a very detailed list and uh, there were items that most people wouldn't think about, but it can be very helpful in narrowing, narrowing down that buyer yes. person profile. Yeah, and absolutely. And I think the other part too is that we've become too, we become too reliant and or some to some degree like we become very comfortable with hiding behind technology and uh, you know as opposed to looking at you know maybe that we need a more you know humanized approach to things and i think that's another area where it says and marketing can work together because i think people are craving more of a the human element in interacting with with brands and with companies and that's something that you know that i think people need to kind of rediscover in some ways i i think you're absolutely right of course the COVID-19 environment isn't conducive to the in-person calls or the trade right. shows or the conferences, but that doesn't mean that sales and marketing people can't team up and make a joint call like we're having now on Zoom yeah. or some other form of technology to have that personal um, engagement. Yeah, it, absolutely. And I think that's, and I think that's, uh, that's a really you know key component because um getting creative and realizing that people still want some level of human interaction and yes you can't do it face to face and all of that but you certainly can find ways to make your engagement more more human and more engaging by doing things like exactly what you said what we're doing right now right yeah and i also think that reaching out um, via direct mail and whether it's a, a brochure or a gift or a book or something of that nature and signed by both a salesperson and a marketing person. Uh, yeah, and, I, and I, I love that idea because I love that idea of, um, of you know, people, 
you know, sending out something like that, I think is a good idea anyway. But I mean, the idea of actually being being signed by both is great because now you're actually demonstrating in a tangible way, like sales and marketing alignment in action. Exactly. And, and it's also when it's, um, and it's, yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. I think people, people should look at that because I think, um, especially you you might have to you might have to do a little more work and figure out where the people are that you send the stuff to as soon as you're not sending it to their offices <laughs> but i think it would be it's a super touch i i agree with you yeah. somebody would have said it's the little difference that makes all the difference yeah and i think that's true and i think that's what uh, i think there's a lot of people who unfortunately right now are kind of just shrugging their shoulders and going oh well, well there's nothing i can do right now you know covid is and everything but reality there's always people who who get creative who find ways of, of tapping in the, you know in into into something and and like rising to the occasion and i think that's probably what's that's going on right now so i think if you're just sitting kind of on your hands you're not doing yourself any any uh you're not you're doing yourself a disservice well what better time is there than to reevaluate it's a perfect time to take a look at your branding your messaging the frequency of contact you have with your target audiences the channels that you're using mm -hmm. making sure that your messaging resonates so uh, use the time well yeah, yeah, and I think that's a I think that's a perfect message for people is like lever, use your time well now and and it's a great time it's a great time to experiment right now and you know it's probably one of the best times for marketing to reach out to sales even on an individual level it'd be good for marketing people to contact the sales people in their organization maybe even just one on one you know just call up various sales people and say you know is there anything that you need differently right now during this period that you normally would is there any way i can help you differently i think that i think you could find a fantastic opportunity to build some great bridges and, and alliances for the future you're absolutely right you know it's it's about rapport and mm -hmm. showing an interest in the other person and forming a team yeah and and people won't forget that particularly because you know we're going through this uh, rather bizarre collective experience uh Probably the most, the most, probably the most collective and shared experience that anyone of any of us will ever have, you know, because it's on a, such a global scale. Right. Mm -hmm. So, what's the last pieces of advice you would give to both sales and marketing to get better aligned? Well, I think um, take advantage of what you learn from the trenches. You know, like it's it's more about lead quality than quantity. Um, mm -hmm. help customers first you know once you sell them they have to stay sold logically and you have to deliver on your promises and it's much easier to sell more to a current client than it is to develop a new one um, check out the competition make sure mm -hmm. that you have an arsenal of collateral um, that that resonates yeah and, and, and I think to your point that uh, you know, you look at that collateral as well and say, okay, is this, is this collateral, have I done anything since, you know, we've gone into this crisis or is the collateral still the exact same as it was? Do I need to update it? Are there other things that, that we need to do? Do the salespeople need something different right now? Right. Yeah. Well, this has been great. I think great piece of advice uh, um, for anyone listening in. Um, you've got to get that sales and marketing. We don't want to be coming back again next year and the year after and the year after talking about sales and marketing again <laughs> we'd like to think that we're actually going to solve it at some stage so um listen all of all of jerry's information will be in the contributor bio but before you go please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and trade press well trade press services has been in business for 25 years we provide writing media outreach and general marketing support to companies and individuals who want to increase visibility, credibility, and name recognition in their marketplaces. We've written thousands of articles that have appeared in more than 850 magazines, five books, hundreds of white papers and case studies. So it's the type of content that supports the sales process and helps marketing to deliver results to the salespeople. 
Yeah, no, that's that's great. And I think um, right now, I think really targeted content is critically important and not everybody knows how to do that. So I would encourage you to check out what Jerry and her team does. Um, again, listen, thank you very much for joining us today. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you.